I'm Dave Heineman with the Kansas Oral History Project. We recently added two interviews to our governor's collection. Bill Graves, who served from 1995 through 2002, and Kathleen Sebelius, who served from 2003 to 2009. The public image of a governor is usually that of ceremonial bill signings, photo ops in the governor's office, handshaking, and public speaking. These videos will show the real work of being governor through the oral histories of Bill Graves and Kathleen Sebelius. Both Graves and Sebelius entered politics differently. Kathleen was immersed at age five when her father first ran for city council and many campaigns later after he became governor of the state of Ohio. My dad, John, better known as Jack Gilligan, ran for office for the first time when I was five. And so I really grew up thinking that's what families did in the fall. They went door to door, <laughs> they put up yard signs. Sure. Nobody ever told me it was a volunteer activity. So I, you know, he won some elections, he lost some elections, but he served as a member of city council, he served as a member of Congress, and he ultimately was governor of Ohio. And that really taught me a lot about politics on the ground, about elections, about parties. He really built the Democratic Party in Cincinnati. There wasn't a Democratic Party in Cincinnati when um, he started to run. Graves entered the political arena completely by accident. He had always assumed that he would become part of the family business operation Graves Truck Line. Bill was at the University of Kansas working on his master's in business management when his father called one day to announce that he'd had an offer he couldn't refuse and had sold the truck line and said, Bill, you will need to find something else to do with your life. Bill later worked on the George H.W. Bush presidential campaign and Jack Breyer then offered him a job in the Kansas Secretary of State's office. Later, when Breyer ran for governor, Graves decided that he would run for Secretary of State. Well, you've, you've, you've got to get comfortable basically walking up to strangers and right. extending your hand and saying, hi, I'm Bill Graves, I'm running for Secretary of State, I'd appreciate your support, or yep. well, you know, whatever the pitch might be. Uh, but um, uh, again, I think it goes back to, uh, all the way back to high school speech and debate. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at Kansas Wesleyan, I actually did some theater uh, and I loved performing um, on stage. I actually did some community theater following that. So um, I, I certainly had a comfort level, uh, which uh, went a long way in helping me with the public appearances and, and uh, self-promotion. Graves took office as the Republican Party was beginning to split between the moderates and the conservatives. He describes the situation he encountered. I thought, okay, we have some differences of opinion. Let's sit down and, and let's try to work through, uh, you know, the the magnitude. We had we had we had surplus of revenues, so we were going to do some tax cuts. Let's have a conversation about, uh, you know, a compromise where we meet in the middle to make meaningful tax cuts, but not not ruin the sort of the, the immediate future of the state. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, social issues, abortion was, 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 was high on everybody's radar at that time. Uh, guns were already emerging as an issue. So there was, there was plenty to be, there was plenty to disagree about. What was, what was disappointing to me, uh, Mike, was that however far you were willing to, to, to go to compromise, the, the goalpost kept moving. Yeah. Um, if you know, if you said I'll cut taxes this much, then the response was, well, we need this much plus. And you, say, well, okay, we'll we'll do this much plus this much. And they'd say, well, no, we need, you know, there was always sort of a a a, 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 a bar too high. Um, and I was, uh, my job was to take care of everybody in this state to do the best I could to to provide pu public policy for 
all Kansans, not just Kansans who voted for me, not just Kansans who were members of the Republican Party, all Kansans. And so I didn't really hesitate or feel any reason to not reach out to members of uh, Democrats in the Kansas legislature and say, can we put a coalition together, if you will, of, of like-minded Republicans and the Democrats and, and take care of the people's business? And that's what we did. Graves' leadership style was to empower those under him. He gave his cabinet the freedom to make suggestions as to how they might improve services for all Kansans. He describes some of their suggestions. I loved it when Rochelle Chronister walked in here and said, I have an idea about, we called it privatization, it was really subcontracting some of the services for uh, uh, social service programs uh, for, for uh, Kansans. Um, it was something we'd never done before. People had criticized the, the way the state was running some of those programs. And I said, you know, let's, let's do it. Um, Dean Carlson, you know, was, was front and center on coming up with a, a $13 billion multimodal transportation program. Uh, Steve Williams had a number of innovative uh, little programs. I, I remember he walked in and said, you know, we have a lot of people that like to hunt in this state, but there's not enough public hunting ground. Um, so I have this idea. Let's offer farmers um, a little stipend, and we're going to create something called the walk-in hunting program. And if you participate and you let your land be available for you know, guys to come and you know, uh, hunt on, we'll pay you, I don't know, it was a dollar an right. acre. It was some amount of money. But it was just sort of those little creative things that um, I would have never thought of those things. One of the insights that Grave shared in his interview with Mike Matson was the entirety of state government in the context of the political tensions of the time. The other thing I'd say, Mike, is, and you know this, making state government work is hard. It's really hard work. These are big, big operations with a lot of people. They spend a lot of money. They touch a lot of people every day. And I think there are some Republicans who, who have decided that, well, failing to be able to actually manage these programs, we'll just do away with the programs. That's how we'll solve, you know, our waste and inefficiency problem is, is we'll just not even have the program and then there won't be a chance for waste and inefficiency. Well, see, I don't view that as the right answer. The right answer is figure out where the waste and inefficiency is and, and fix it. You know, go find better people to, to, to do whatever it is you've committed to do. So, um, yeah, I'm an old school Republican. I'm still a Republican. Uh, I think that uh, the pendulum will eventually swing back, um, but I don't know uh, if I'll see it in my lifetime. Sibelius describes how Graves worked with her during the transition of their administrations. I worked very closely with outgoing Governor Graves, who was totally spectacular as a um, departing um, governor to work with me on because he put forward the first budget and I got to sort of amend it but it was really his framework budget and the allotments that you're referring to the cuts that he made um, were cuts that he came to me with and said why don't I do these now and um, kind of save you at least this chapter of pain and we worked together on don't cut so much here, how about there? But he took those on himself, which was really a great gift uh, coming into an office. So I didn't, as you say, had to start with, you know, slashing funds away. And then we um, came up with kind of an interesting scheme, which was, it wasn't a scheme, it was a framework. <laughs> uh, the, the legislature, or the, the law says that the governor has to submit a balanced budget. And um, the notion was that I couldn't, at this point, the legislature was less balanced than it was when I served in the legislature. There were more Republicans and fewer Democrats. 
And I knew that what I could not do is get Republicans to spend money in areas that I wanted to spend it. So um, working with the uh, budget director, um, we spent every dime. I put together a budget that spent 100% of every dime we could find. And then we had a little proviso that went into the budget that said, um, if the legislature wants to cut funding to comply with the Balanced Budget Act or whatever the official title was, we gave them a percentage that you cut across the board, knowing that no one would ever do that. Um, but the last thing I wanted to do was to give a roadmap of how to cut money out of programs that I felt were really important. And hoping that that expanded spending <laughs> would get us to the point where the legislate I mean, the economy would begin to um, tick upward. And when District Court Judge Terry Bullock declared the state's school finance plan to be unconstitutional, Sibelius decided to call a special session. But first, she traveled the state in order to receive input from citizens about what they wanted in their school finance plan. Again, that had hearings around the state. So this preceding the call for the legislature did sort of hearings and town halls and things around the state to talk about what we had to do for school funding, knowing that it was, um, I mean, I think school funding is the most personal issue. It also is an issue that's important everywhere. And everybody knew if you mm -hmm. close a school, you close a town, that it was, uh, you know, important to balance rural urban. It was important to, you know, have excellence in schools. And it was a real value that Kansan shared, Republican, Democrat, independent. I mean, people believe K through 12 education was really fundamentally the job of state government and something that they were willing to pay taxes to fund. That was um, critical. So um, we called them back and I, you know, had an outline of a bill, I knew what they had put together, but the court wasn't shy about giving some <laughs> parameters, you know, how much money, how it had to be done, had to be power equalized, how much you could balance rich versus poor, and, um, you know, put together a coalition of, again, some moderate House members, some of whom paid the price of their legislative seats by participating in that, including Bill Kassebaum, Nancy's son, who was, you know, part of that coalition. But... It was a really urgent need, and we could say, okay, we've got the Supreme Court on one hand, we've got schools that have to open in September, you want your kid to go back to school, or August, um, we, we have to come back this summer and get this done. And um, not easy, but um, again, I think people understood that they're, but I think it was important to get their hometown constituents ready to roll, the school board association, the folks at, at the local level. The Near the end of her interview, Sibelius was asked to explain her experiences as governor. Wow, um, that's a hard, hard thing to do. I, I would say that there's no question, being a legislator made me a much better governor mm -hmm. uh, because I knew how the legislature worked. I knew what people needed and wanted. It, it made me um, much more able to, you know, kind of put the coalitions together, build a program, identify policies where people would come together. And no question, being a governor made me a much better secretary. These excerpts from oral history interviews provide only a small sample of what a governor does. Both Graves and Sibelius had strong commitments to public service as well as serving the interests of all Kansans. Please check out our Kansas Oil History Project website where you can find their complete transcript, as well as interviews of many other important Kansas political figures.